Hey, you're Rich on the Pat Goodley, and let's take a look at the E date and the EO month function in Excel. Now, the let's start with the EO month function first. So, the EO month function actually accepts two inputs. It accepts the start date or any date and the number of months. Now, what it will do is that it will push the date to the end of the month. So, EO month actually stands for end of month. Let's say I'm picking up a date and I'm saying that uh, the number of months is one. So what it's going to do is, it's going to pick up this date and then push it to a month ending date of the next month. So let's say right now we are on the February, the next month is March, but the EO month function has pushed the date, which is this date, to the end of the next month. Why? Because the number of months that we chose was one, that we want to move one month ahead. And since EO month always gives you the month ending date. Now let's say, I'm just going to increase the size of this. Now let's say for example, just a little more maybe. All right. Now let's say for example, um, I do not specify one here and I specify zero here. That means I don't want to go any months further. I just want to have the current month ending date. And I press enter. This is going to give me the month ending date considering the leap year if it was and it's going to give me the month ending date of the current month. I drag the formula down and I have the month ending dates for all of these dates. Uh, similarly, just like EO month, we can have an exact date function as well. So that's called E date. E date means exact date function. So equals to E date, again, two inputs, start date, and then the number of months. So number of months could be ahead in time or you know it could be back in time so i could also say that minus two minus two will give me the exact date from this date two months prior so if i press enter this is going to take this date two months prior and give me the 16th of the month which was two months prior so this was 16 december 1979 right so e date function actually gives you the exact date and EO month function actually gives you the month ending date. The second variable, which is the month number, can be in positive. That will take the date ahead. And it could be zero for the current month. Or it could be a negative for taking the date back in time. So those, those were the two functions, uh, edate and, uh, sorry, edate and EO month. And let's take a look at one of the examples here where you have to find your 18th birthday. Let's say this is your birth date. I'm just going to left line that. Let's say you, uh, this is your birth date and you have to find um, your 18th birthday. So how would you do that? So I'm going to say equals to E date. Why? Because I don't have to move to the end of the month date. I want to find exactly the date of my birthday. So I'm going to pick up the date here and 18th birthday. So that means I have to go 18 years ahead. In one year, there are 12 months. So I will multiply this by 12. So 18 is the number of years that I want to go ahead, multiply by the number of months. This is going to give me the total number of months that I want to push the date ahead, which is going to be 216 months, right? So you can also do that, or you can just directly write 216 months, both will work. But the second variable always has to go, has got to be the number of months. And I press enter, this is going to give me a number. Number is nothing but a date. I drag this down, convert this into a date format, and I will get the number of, uh, I will get the 18th birthday for all of these dates. All right, so those were the two e-date and the EO month function. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, or, or read our blog at goodly.co.in. Well, thank you so much for watching this, and you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.